Thank you very much, Kamran. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to this session. Uh, it's been a very interesting journey because, uh, you know, uh, I, so as Kamran said, my name is Farhad Ahmed. I work with Standard Chartered Bank in Pakistan. I look after external communications for them. Uh, I am a graduate of the fourth MBA batch of IOBM, which was MBA4. We graduated back in 1999. And uh, after graduation, I joined Nestle as a management trainee, went through the management training program with them, and then moved to a bank called HSBC. And now I'm with Standard Chartered looking after their corporate comms. So uh, it's been a, an interesting journey and an interesting transition. Uh, just to, uh, you know, let, uh, to tell you all about a little bit about the Alumni Association. It was about two years ago that we, uh, that we restructured the alumni and we uh, sort of uh, decided that we needed to bring more focus into into things and into how you know and, and do a good outreach and you know reconnect ourselves with our our, our alma mater um, and then you know we formed a committee of the nine people as uh, Kamran said who who are from different levels different professional levels and are, are working with different uh, in different industries in Pakistan and conversation where we restructure what we wanted to do so so the last year that we've spent we've spent in sorting out a lot of the hygiene and a lot of the basic ground uh, you know a basic ground uh, uh, situations or, or, or things that really help us to take the association to the next level so what are the fundamental things that we really needed uh, at, at the university and, and you know thank you to Talib Saab for, for, for facilitating that was get a full-time resources to look after the alumni affairs and to look after uh, you know uh, the alumni activities that, that we do. So then Kamran and his team, uh, Sumaya was there, then Kamran came in and then Faiza and Nadia and 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 you know after they've come in we've really we've really seen the kind of impact that these guys have had in terms of creating the right uh, value for helping uh, us reach out to alumni. So one, one of the things that we did was that we, we then, uh, with the help of got from LinkedIn, and then we tried in addition to out to, uh, you know, to people in, in within Pakistan, we looked at alumni who are based internationally. And Alhamdulillah, I think, uh, I think in the month of Ramadan, uh, Kamran can correct me if I'm wrong, I probably have met We've exchanged, uh, you know, notes with so many alumni across the world. We've spoken to the to the alumni team in the, in the U.S. We've spoken to the alumni team in Europe, uh, in the GCC. Now today we're talking to you. So we've we've really, you know, uh, gone the, you know, across the group in terms of tapping into the alumni. Office. So a we wanted to you know, reach out to you and understand what you're doing now in your life. And we, we really wanted to see how you can, you know, uh, the Institute can help you develop something or, or, you know, help you with your careers. And similarly, if you feel that you can give back to the Institute with something, which, which can be anything, we'd be really happy to, you know, uh, to facilitate that, that conversation at this point in time. So, uh, with that, you know, we, we've got Talib Saab with us. Talib Saab is going to take us through the formal presentation on and talk about the Alumni Association. And then we'll go around the room and we'll introduce each other and we'll get to know a little bit more about each other. So uh, with that, if I can request Talib Saab to please, uh, uh, you know, uh, give his welcome note today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum and uh, it's great to see uh, some familiar faces. Uh, our uh, graduates, alumni now. Uh, colleagues now and uh, I know it's very late in Australia um, I think most of you are in Australia um, must be around 10 or so uh, and uh, uh, I think you're the lucky ones because uh, I was there uh, I think a couple of years ago um, in Australia I visited a few universities and uh, actually my daughter was studying uh, she did her master's from uh, Queensland University in Brisbane. So I was there with her. I took her there and then 
uh, visited Sydney for a few days. And then uh, it's a really nice place. Uh, actually, my younger brother also and his family lives there in Brisbane. And uh, so, uh, well, great to see you. And uh, I was a bit surprised when I saw the uh, profile, uh, which I'm going to share that quite a few of our uh, alumni are living in Australia and um, uh, working there, or I think some are also studying. Um, so uh, I think uh, we are in a process of reconnecting with, uh, with, our, uh, with our graduates. As Farhan just mentioned that uh, uh, we had uh, uh, a great meeting with uh, alumni from Europe yesterday. Then a few days back uh, with, uh, uh, with our alumni from North America, mostly based in Canada and US. And uh, prior to that, uh, from uh, the Middle East, mostly from UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, and other countries. Um, so, uh, so the process is continuing. And as we are meeting, uh, that network is expanding. So when we met uh, uh, with our uh, uh, graduates from uh, uh, from North America, now I see that uh, many more of our graduates are joining that group. <coughs> and now there's a separate uh, Toronto group. And I, I see a lot of messages and that uh, people living in um, Houston or people living in uh, other places now connecting with, it, with each other and uh, making plans to get together. Same thing is happening in Europe, where uh, a lot of them are living uh, in London and uh, uh, in areas, uh, uh, in suburbs and other places. Um, and uh, so they are making plans to get together. So, uh, and that is the whole purpose uh, for all of you to, uh, uh, to know each other, because I'm sure that the group that we are right now, all of you, that some of you might not have known that others are living in Australia. So it's, it's a great way to network, great way to help each other, a great way to socialize, great way to, great way to get to know the families. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, um, and meet and you know, discuss uh, old times, old days. Um, so if, if I go back to, the, uh, if I go to the slide, I think, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So if, uh, can I go back to the first slide? Uh, no, the previous, yes. So we have around, no, previous one. So we have around, no, previous one where it said uh, before, yes. So we have around uh, 14,000 graduates uh, present globally. And uh, so, uh, so the data might not be accurate because uh, Kamran uh, took this data from uh, LinkedIn a lot of time, uh, a lot of times we, we don't update our LinkedIn profile. Uh, so maybe you have moved from one place to the other, uh, but whatever was available as of May 2020, which is recent, uh, this is uh, our uh, uh, total, uh, this is the data. So if we go to the next slide. Um, so this is basically uh, the profile of our graduates, undergraduates, graduates, PhDs. And that is the total profile. And uh, of course, a lot of you have done both bachelor's and master's from, from IOBM. I think most of you have done that. So of course, there's an overlapping between undergrad and grad uh, in, in that sense. Yes, uh, uh, so, so this, uh, this is the slide I was talking about, that uh, global presence, of course, Pakistan, uh, you know, majority of our alumni are based in Pakistan working for various companies. Uh, Australia, uh, right now our profile says uh, 244 um, uh, um, of you are in Australia, around 276 in UAE. Uh, of course, Canada and United States, uh, you know, uh, if you combine both those two countries, so we have around over 700, uh, over 600 uh, alumni there, then UK and so on and so forth. And we don't know quite a few of you who might be in, in, in this region or in other countries. Uh, so 
you know as uh, you know you you spread the words or you spread the message that uh, you know this, uh, there's a group and you are you should join i think this will expand even in australia i know most probably some of you are based in new zealand uh, i know uh, we have uh, at least one uh, of our uh, graduate who did his phd from new zealand and is now teaching uh, uh, there in new zealand uh, i don't think i don't see him in this group he keeps on writing to me so i'm going to ask him to join uh, uh, the group uh, so so this is uh, uh, now of course uh, uh, when the presence when we talk about presence some of the alumni is studying. So, if we talk about China, then I'm sure uh, that uh, uh, that out of these ten, majority would be the students, maybe doing their higher education uh, or maybe working there. Yes. Uh, next slide. So, um, these are some of our uh, top employers from Pakistan: uh, Habib Bank and uh, AKU and, uh, and many more. So uh, the footprint print is everywhere uh, of our alumni in, in most of the multinational, almost all multinationals and national organizations. Uh, they are also working for uh, public sector organizations like State Bank and, uh, and many more. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, uh, banks, uh, banking sector or financial sector uh, I think that if you combine that group, I think they'll be uh, in the top in terms of hiring our graduates. And of course, uh, 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 manufacturing sector and pharmaceutical. I think pharmaceutical sector is one of the sector where a lot of our graduates, uh, you know, work in that sector because of some of our programs that we offer. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, you know that uh, I mean this is the, the designation. Um, so I'm assuming that when we talk about CEOs and uh, uh, directors, then a lot of a lot of them would be, uh, you know, CEOs of their own companies. They are entrepreneurs, and uh, we are uh, this year we are celebrating our 25th year. So we have not reached that uh, that level uh, because you know I mean. Farhan will maybe will have uh, the longest uh, in terms of years of experience because he's uh, you know um, uh, a graduate of uh, the fourth batch and he has reached the directorship level um, and I think I see in the next uh, few years our graduates reaching uh, the level of uh, CEO in in large companies and uh, in um, a lot of these establishments. Um, we see a lot of IBS CEOs because IBS 70 plus years old. We are only 25 years old. So th there's a difference of almost uh, 35 years in age. And uh, I think now I'll see that trend where uh, a lot of our alumni graduates will be, uh, you know, uh, taking the, these positions, senior level positions. Um, and uh, I think many are there in succession planning to take to take those uh, uh, top positions in various organizations. Um, I know some of our uh, graduates have reached SCVP level, and, and uh, I know them personally actually in in banks and uh, in other organizations. So so they are just one step behind in terms of taking that uh, top position. Um, so, uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, uh, I think you will all agree that uh, uh, marketing uh, had been a very strong area at CBM. Uh, I think our graduates did really well after doing their majors in marketing. Uh, but now we are catching up in um, other areas like finance, uh, you know, under uh, uh, Tazeen Arslan, who's again our graduate, is heading our finance and accounting, and she has transformed the department into uh, a department where now a lot of uh, our students are opting for finance and doing really well. The 
going for CFA uh, qualification and um, other other qualifications. We have exemptions from uh, uh, from uh, uh, ICAP and from ICMAP, and so that uh, uh, I think we have about nine uh, course uh, exemption from ICAP uh, for CA Chartered Accountancy. So that gives credit to our program and how strong and these programs are. Uh, uh, the other program that is picking up uh, in recent times is uh, supply chain. That's one area where a lot of our graduates are now opting for supply chain. And then, as you know, I think most of you are very young, so you were with us just a few years, uh, you know, with, uh, so there's not very long gap since we left IOBM. That we are not just a, a business, uh, uh, institute anymore. We have, uh, um, uh, you know, social sciences programs. We have uh, one engineering program, uh, and we have computer science. So we have actual science. We have media. Media has really picked up in recent times. We have a very nice studio now. So, uh, so it's it's uh, we have psychology. We have education. Uh, we have economics. So we we are now. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a very diversified type of, of an institute offering uh, various programs. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, uh, so let's go back to this alumni association. That's why we are meeting under, under the banner of alumni association. So alumni association was established many years ago. I think almost, uh, if you look at its uh, it's established under uh, as, uh, Societies Act. And I think, I, if I recall, it was established somewhere in, uh, I think, early 2000, if, if I'm not wrong. But it was not uh, very active. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, because uh, we had, because we were very new, and I think our, uh, uh, to be very frank, our maybe priorities were doing other things, trying to establish ourselves as, as premier institute. Uh, but also realizing at the same time that the backbone of every university is its alumni, whether it's through endowment, whether it's through uh, various other uh, activities, whether you, are, you act as mentors, whether you act as faculty members, you come as visiting faculty, you come as guest speakers. Um, you know, that's, that's how uh, you, uh, you uh, stay in touch with uh, your alma mater. And uh, that happens not here, but globally. Um, you know, if you look at very old traditional universities like Harvard and uh, other universities, I mean, their endowment runs into billions and billions of dollars. Uh, I think Harvard endowment, I don't know, because of downturn, economic downturn must have, must have come down. But at one time it went uh, as high as $40 billion, um, uh, you know, which is, uh, uh, huge amount for, for one university to have an endowment fund. And a lot of those endowment fund came from the alumni. So uh, Kamran, once he joined us uh, uh, from IBA a few years ago, uh, so actually he joined as, as uh, head of our training, uh, which comes under EMAC. Um, and uh, his job was to uh, promote uh, corporate training uh, under IBM's umbrella. Uh, but he was given some additional uh, responsibilities and alumni association was one of those responsibilities. So the whole idea was to carry forward our uh, uh, founder president, Mr. Shahjan Date, Mr. Shahjan Karim's uh, vision uh, to make this as a premier institute uh, in Pakistan and also as a, uh, as a known uh, institute for uh, abroad also you know, through our partnerships. We have partnerships with over 70 uh, plus universities all around the world. Even in Australia, we have uh, partnerships. Uh, so uh, we thought to re revive uh, alumni associations and that happened in, uh, I think, 2000, uh, towards, end, uh, towards 2018, end of 2018, beginning of 2019. And uh, so the first, uh, request that came from and, uh, and a new uh, uh, office bearers were inducted with Farhan taking the lead. 
And the first request that came to us was that we need a proper setup. We, we need an office. Uh, we cannot function without an office. We need our staff. We need proper staff. We need support staff. We need all those facilities. And once we do that, once you give that to us, then we, we will be able to promote. So we said, yes, you're right. And that's how in our new building, if you were there a few years ago, three or four years ago, which is known as Shah Jahan Askari Center of Excellence, on the second floor where our training center is, we established our alumni association office. And this is just the inauguration of that, that happened in November 30th, 2019. So very recent. Uh, it's a nice office and with proper staff. So, you know, uh, you, you were introduced to some of our, uh, some of the staff members and they'll continue to be in touch uh, with you uh, through, through various means. Uh, so uh, this is, as I've said, on the second floor. And we started uh, some programs, uh, some get togethers. So on the right is uh, Anwar Maksud's uh, theater. Um, that happened uh, in April 2019 at the Arts Council. So we invited alumni and uh, the family members uh, to come to that uh, uh, to come to that event. And I, if I recall, right after that, um, we invited all of them to come and join us uh, for Grand Mushaira uh, at. Uh, uh, Mahata Palace, which our group, Farhan, is also part of that group. Uh, Corporate Pakistan group was organizing. So a lot of our alumni went to that Mushaira right after that, uh, after this play. Uh, so uh, plans were, uh, were uh, massive for this year because we were planning to celebrate our 25th year. Uh, but then, uh, we did, uh, if you go to the next slide, we did have few events, uh, Lessons for Leaders a series that we were organizing under uh, Alumni Association. On the left is uh, the studio that I was talking about, the media studio, where uh, uh, I think that's Abrar, who's speaking to, uh, to uh, faculty members and uh, students and alumni. And on the right is the, our new uh, training facility, which is right next to the alumni office. So on that floor, we have uh, training facilities, we have alumni office, we have uh, Emacs office, and then we also have the incubation center. Tom Ran is looking after that also. And uh, so we, uh, what we are trying to do is encourage our uh, current students to come up with ideas, uh, innovative ideas, and then we will guide them to set up their uh, businesses and 90% uh, of our mentors, 90% uh, uh, of our mentors are our alumni. So that's how our alumni are connecting with, with IOBM you know, by, by mentoring. And a lot of them are also teaching. Uh, actually quite a few of our alumni are now the faculty members and have done a PhD also uh, from, from IOBM. Uh, um, Dr. Samra Javed, who's heading our EMAC, is our first PhD uh, graduate. Uh, so this was the first event that we had. Uh, on the right is Dr. Irfan Heather, our uh, rector. And on the left is, uh, if you know, Mr. Mohsin Furkan, who's husband of Mrs. Sabina Mohsin. So we had a, a good fun. Uh, and on the right are some of the photographs. Uh, we were also gifted. Uh, with 100 bicycles by uh, our neighbors, one of our business uh, groups. And he was very, um, it was nice of him to gift that, uh, those uh, 100 bicycles. But the day those bicycles arrived, I think three days after that, we were shut down because of uh, coronavirus. So we have not used those bicycles yet, uh, but we are hoping that as soon as things are back to normal, we'll be able to, uh, you know, use this and the, the purpose is not to use it just for cycling club, but also to have various stations, uh, bicycle stations, as you have in, in your, uh, you know, in universities abroad, 
and people, students can commute from one building to the other by using those bicycles. They can take it from one station, park it to the other station, and then, uh, you know, they can use that. This is an environmental friendly type of an exercise uh, that uh, we, are, uh, we are doing. The same group actually uh, is uh, also sponsoring our uh, MIT Fab Lab for our incubation center. That's about uh, maybe uh, about you know a uh, few million rupees project, and it's very nice of them to sponsor that also. So that will, of course, have uh, 3D printers and other necessary. We have, we are already registered with MIT for that uh, Fab Lab. So these were some of the I, we talked about the BATEC uh, with Standard Chartered. Uh, I think I'm told that there are about 45 of our alumni working for Standard Chartered. So we were able to, in a, at a short notice, gather just a few of them, but uh, hopefully. So we are also now being approached by other organizations like HBL, UBL, Unilever to have such a bad tech with our alumni who are working for those organizations. On the right is our uh, GCC countries uh, alumni. As I've said, mostly based in uh, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, and other countries. Um, and uh, I don't think we have uh, photographs of the last two. Uh, that is uh, North America and Europe. That I think we will update this these slides uh, um, soon. So uh, I'll urge you to become a member of our alumni association. These are some of the facilities which, of course, you will not be able to utilize. But uh, please become a member. And uh, we are also partnering with uh, Awari. We were thinking to launch our hospitality management diploma program uh, with uh, one of the partnering with one of the American universities uh, uh, based in Virginia, and also partnering with Awari and a few other uh, local partners. But again, the crisis came and we were not able to do so. Um, so, so these are so. Please do become a member of our alumni association. And uh, one thing that you can right away use, and while you're sitting at home, working from home, uh, use it because it's very uh, useful. Is uh, free Coursera uh, training, so you can get certified by Coursera. So we can provide you with the license that is valid until August thirty first. And uh, you know whatever you there are hundreds of uh, courses that you can you can do it. It's a two two week type of a, a program, so you you have to go through that module, then appear in the exam, and once you clear the exam, you will be uh, you will be given a certificate by Coursera, and it's a recognized uh, globally recognized certification. So if you're interested, please write to Kamran and we'll issue you the license for Coursera. Um, um, so, uh, so these are some of the uh, of things that, uh, that are available there. So uh, uh, I think now I'm uh, towards the end of my presentation. Uh, so again, um, I will uh, uh, you know, request you to be an active member of, 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 of the Alumni Association. Uh, and now a lot of things are being done virtually. Um, as our uh, rector is not here, so I will just take two, three minutes and then I'll request uh, Javed Ahmed Saab to, to, uh, to talk about what we did during this crisis. So uh, towards the uh, end of February, uh, I think it was maybe around 23rd, I don't recall, but around maybe 25th, 26th February, we were asked to uh, not allow students to come to the campus. This was right after the first hour lease that we actually we we had we, we were done with our weekend um, hour lease and then we were conducting our weekday uh, hour lease Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we were done with Wednesday hour lease. Thursday was the last day for our hour lease for our weekdays and Wednesday evening we got the notice that you cannot allow students to come to the campus. So that those that Thursday hour lease was not uh, held. Uh, our faculty was coming to the uh, to the campus, 
and uh, staff was coming to the campus. So we uh, got together, all of us, and we said that we cannot let go of the semester like this. We cannot uh, let students, uh, those, especially those who are graduating uh, uh, and would be uh, in the convocation of 2020, uh, if we don't complete the semester, then uh, you know they will the graduation will be delayed until next year. So we said, Donnie, we said that uh, you know we need to have online semester. Uh, fortunately, our strategy of five years, and Mr. Javed Ahmed is the author of that, was completed in December of 2019, and it was uh, printed in January of 2020. And one of the main uh, objective or one of the main strategy was to have blended learning introduced at our campus in the next two to three years. So our, uh, we, we were planning to introduce uh, uh, online uh, teaching by 2021. And a lot of our faculty members were using uh, the platform, LMS platform, uh, which is uh, Moodle, if you're aware of Moodle, uh, and they were using it to communicate with the students. So about 40 uh, out of 1,000 sections that were being offered in spring, about 10% of uh, those uh, sections were on Moodle. So the challenge was to bring the remaining 90% of the sections on Moodle. And what was the challenge? In next one week, in the next 10 days, otherwise we will lose the semester. Mm -hmm. We got together. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. So, uh, uh, so we were we were faced with the challenge to uh, to continue with our uh, online uh, uh, session, and we did that under the leadership of our rector, Dr. Fon Heather. Oh, Dr. Fon Heather has joined, so I, I will not take his presentation now. <laughs> I just see his uh, that he has just joined. Uh, so, uh, so I think I'm done with my presentation, uh, Dr. Sap. Uh, I was just uh, I didn't. Did not see you, so now you have joined. So if you can just talk a little bit about uh, uh, how we took the challenge of online teaching and uh, where we are at right now. Thank you, everyone. Ji, salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, everyone. Uh, I think uh, uh, President Saab may have briefed you about some of the things I've just joined in. I'm sorry. Uh, the important thing uh, uh, in my experience uh, over uh, this experiential learning is very much uh, interesting, uh, I think, from an academic point of view and as well as uh, the challenge point of view for a university that has to go uh, through a massive change management exercise. Uh, and we had to actually go from about 100 sections uh, this semester in spring to uh, 2020, we had 1,000 sections that were concurrently running. And uh, when the lockdown happened, uh, fortunately, we had already started implementing LMS and there were about 100, uh, 100 uh, sections that were running at that time with about 50 faculty members. So we had to go from 50 faculty members to around 400 faculty members and uh, from 100 sections to 1,000 sections. And we also had to meet the HEC requirements for course readiness, for faculty readiness, and for systems readiness. So there were so many challenges. And I, uh, I think uh, the entire institution, the all the faculty, all the uh, students, uh, the management and the administration, everyone came together and we worked as a team and uh, the, uh, I think uh, it's a massive, und uh, it was a massive underta uh, undertaking. We had uh, actually in our students over 24,000 registrations in various semesters of these 1,000 schools. 
and uh, we had to bring everyone on board uh, so that the students are not left out so that the faculty are not le left out and uh, we had to make this transition and uh, in the meantime uh, although some of the faculty members were using it but many of the faculty members was the first time and uh, some of our faculty members are quite senior people also and they are not as uh, uh, technology aware as uh, the others so all of them have to be pulled in uh, it was a massive effort we identified the initial power users gave them the responsibility of change management and we associated those power users with the HODs, the HODs and the power users and their support group then uh, started going through uh, this process. And uh, fortunately, we had a very good uh, technology team. Uh, there were people in our IT department who were uh, quite uh, expert at using the LMS and uh, there were some faculty members also who were very good technically. Uh, computer science faculty and uh, some other faculty also and uh, these people actually uh, were instrumental in developing the reports that helped the uh, management like me uh, and the other HODs and the faculty and they they were continuously monitoring these things and then we were uh, able to uh, uh, to make this uh, transition to online learning. Uh, the wonderful thing uh, from all of this exercise is that we have uh, been able to compress the uh, implementation of LMS from uh, three years to about uh, two months. And, uh, and uh, this uh, change management has taught us several things that the importance of experiential learning, that in experiential learning, you go from not uh, you you take up challenges uh, it's adventurous it is thrilling and it is uh, also uh, quite exciting uh, so going into something new and then discovering the uh, details as you go along uh, so yeah, the other important thing is for the alumna i think uh, we are uh, we have been able to mob mobilize the alumni belonging to various parts of the world together. And this LMS has taught us how to connect uh, the alumni uh, with our students. Uh, I, I think we will be able to now uh, create accounts in uh, LMS where uh, uh, you know, all the volunteers, and uh, one of my pet uh, projects was uh, that I wanted to connect uh, uh, the uh, each student with at least one mentor from the uh, industry. Uh, we have around 6,000 students and that means uh, we have to connect them to 6,000 other uh, mentors. And these 6,000, of course, we don't want to burden an alumni with too many students. Of course, there would be some who would like to take on four or five mentees. Uh, but uh, at least uh, the 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 simpler solution is, uh, and that it is very much possible through uh, the LMS. In LMS, we will uh, soon be developing about, uh, uh, we will call them course or the mentoring sessions. And these mentoring sessions, uh, there will be 6,000, and we will connect each student in the, those mentoring sessions with the, one of the uh, alumnus and uh, in this way the, they can have uh, uh, regular mentoring sessions maybe once a semester it won't be a too much time consuming thing it's it would be enough if you will you are able to look at the past performance of these students and also uh, and uh, give them some advice and they can actually seek advice one uh, off and on about uh, what their career directions is and how they are faring and what they need to uh, study. One of the major problems with the students is that uh, they typically do not have that long-term vision. So when they are studying, their focus is primarily on uh, their focus is primarily on passing the exams. 
so the broader uh, understanding of the subject the broader implications of what they are studying are often hidden to you and i think people uh, in uh, prominent places like you uh, would be greatly uh, helpful in uh, motivating them to go beyond the book and look at the broader context uh, the pro broader professional and the global context uh, in which to perceive the elements of the subjects that they are studying so i'm really very uh, motivated of myself i'm feeling at these challenging times i think we are really motivated of uh, doing new things and exploring new ideas and thanks to uh, mr kamran bilgrami and his team uh, for arranging all of these sessions and uh, giving me this opportunity to meet all of you thank you thank you very much uh, uh, so, so so let me tell you iobm is one of the first institute to complete a uh, semester uh, without hiccups uh, well before time all other universities are still undergoing their semesters so i think today or tomorrow is the last final exam and all hats all claps to dr irfan and his entire team uh, now uh, i would like to move towards a few of the alumni council members who have uh, joined us in the conversation now uh, before farhan leads the conversation with all of you should we take a, a photograph uh, should we take a photograph okay. before photograph first so if everyone uh, turns on your video let's have a victory sign let's have a group photograph victory sign like this डॉक्टर इरफान आपको थोड़ा हाथ पीछे करना होगा यस लाइक दिस थैंक यू रुगन स्माइल नभान इज टेकिंग द फोटो ओके वन मोर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो uh abrar and asif jafri from the alumni council are here with us a minute with each one one of them please abrar thank you kamran uh, thank you everyone for joining in it's a pleasure humble to be here i am abrar khan i am part of the uh, alumni association as well as a proud alumni uh, i graduated in year 2000 so yeah 20 years in total marketing i have uh, worked at panasonic dolans uh, national foods and most of my experience has been at nestle mostly in the middle east uh, moved back to pakistan uh, two years back uh, as uh, kamran has mentioned i'm part uh, of the alumni association i'm the general secretary and uh, part of the team with farhan to uh, reboot reenergize reconnect and refuel so if a few key r's that i've mentioned uh, that's the request for today that we all must uh, reconnect we must refuel the alumni association we must uh, reboot our engines and try to connect mostly with ourselves uh, what we have seen in different platforms uh, uh, in different uh, regions is that a few of us might have just gone through some stress times economically uh, job wise uh, business wise through tough times through education through family distresses so uh, the alumni association provides a great platform for all of us to reconnect uh, chat about it discuss and aap sab se request hai ke do come back do revert we've got people now you must have realized with 25 plus years experience who are your uh, brothers and sisters uh, from same universities we are there uh, we are there to also give you some support and nudge in some uh, guidance and also in these times of uh, difficulties be there whether it be difficulties or whether your business is doing very well so i have just attended three sessions today and there are some businesses in the world who are doing phenomenally well and their leaders are kind of in challenge kya kya kare so i think that's part and parcel of being in business and part of life so it's uh, a great opportunity uh, everyone in uh, australia and far east to connect with you uh, stay in touch 
and we'll be posting our LinkedIn connections and the alumni associations uh, contact pages. Do stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abroad. Asif. Asif Jati. Ji, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Come on, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, all right, great. Uh, so, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Asif Jati. Uh, I am uh, uh, IOBM alumni and graduated in 2006. I worked for companies like Unilever, uh, uh, American Express, and General uh, North Pakistan. Uh, but now I'm turned into a tech entrepreneur, uh, running, a, you know, as the founder and CEO of Key Ocean Private Limited, which is the largest messaging and voice company in the country. I also run the largest startup ecosystem platform called Momentum. Uh, so now I am very actively involved in uh, the technology space in the country and connected to all leading platforms in the country. So if uh, uh, any one of you would like to, you know, seek my help or do anything in Pakistan with respect to technology, uh, so, you know, I can help you with that. Um, so looking forward to stay in touch with all of you. And uh, in this time of COVID, I think it's uh, in the best interest of all of us that we stay connected. We share opportunities that are coming up in our close circles and share it with our alumni because some of us may be going through tough times and uh, it will be great to, you know, start that relationship that, you know, got disconnected, you know, after we graduated from the college. So um, really glad to be here and looking forward to stay in touch with all of you and uh, let's, let's move forward uh, as one team. Thank you. Thank you, Asif. Uh, over to Farhan. Uh, Thank you, Gamran. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Abraj. Thank you, Asif. Thank you, Tarat Saab, for your words and uh, Dr. Uh, Ramon, uh, for your sorry words. to interrupt. Uh, Javed Saab put chance to meet you. Javed Saab, yes, 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 you know, for me, it is really wonderful seeing so many faces here that I know on or be honge, uh, Rauha, Rauha Rafiq, on Shan, Dimelo, where is Dimelo? He's gone. Salman and, uh, and Komal, they are now married. I remember the two of them in my class. And I was wondering what was going on. So now I know what is, what was going on. Okay. So, it's really wonderful to see all of you here. Uh, Kamran asked me to say something about the incubation center. He just asked me about, I think, uh, uh, what, three minutes ago? <laughs> so, so uh, I, I'll share my view on this whole exercise. Uh, can, if you look at the world's developed economies, you will see that 80 to 90% of the of the biz, uh, businesses are entrepreneurial, small and medium enterprises, and only about 10% of the contribution to the economy comes from giants like Habib Bank or Standard Chartered Bank or Sandoz or Aventis, multinational companies. So I think it is a very fundamental uh, duty of a university, especially a business school, to to, to, to promote entrepreneurship. Uh, and I think IOBM has taken the lead in Pakistan in doing this. Uh, and there's a separate uh, whole entrepreneurship program, uh, which is enti almost entirely experiential based. And as a follow up of that program is, is an incubation center, Kamran. And I think Faiza will probably be better to explain it a little more. I'll just tell you what my thoughts on this is. I think that, that, that entrepreneurs must take competition very seriously and entrepreneurs must take quality and, and uniqueness very seriously. And I think we should not be afraid of quality and uniqueness. We should not look at these things as threats. These things are opportunities. These are the things that will make Pakistan take its rightful place on the world stage. You all live in Australia and you see how, in, you must have seen how businesses pursue excellence in Australia in everything that they do. 
in their value chain, how businesses operate uh, very formally. You know, it, it, this thing about innovation, about being creative. Uh, one is the type of innovation and creativity that we see in so many third world countries that leads us nowhere, in my view. And then there is this other form of creativity and innovation, which is a very systematic step-by-step -step building of the process of innovation and uniqueness and quality. I am a person who subscribes to that method. I do not look at the other method as a threat to my method. I think the other method of, you know, of that genius spark is a powerful method. Uh, I am not Einstein, so I cannot follow that genius spark method. But those of us who are, I have nothing against that. And I do not consider that as a threat to my framework at all. Uh, so uh, we are, uh, uh, Kamran is, is organizing a, a program of mentorship. Or just that Talib Sahib ne 90% of the mentors of these businesses that have reached our incubation center are going to come from our alumni. Um, I think I, I'm lucky that I sneaked into the other 10%. And so next week or week in about two weeks time after Eid, I think I, we will be starting this process yeah, of, uh, uh, of, of and, and uh, you know, starting this process of mentorship for these people who have been selected in the incubation center of, of EMEC. And uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, did you know one thing? Let, let, I, I speak to a lot of people and I ask them this question when I'm talking about innovation. Did you know this? It, I, it's very surprising. And I'm not even sure whether it is 100% correct or not. But I, I have read on the website of INSEAD, which is this business school in France. And I don't think they would put it up there if it was not correct. And there was this trainer from Malaysia who came to Pakistan and he said the same thing that in Malaysia, no business is allowed to be registered until it passes the test of innovation. And that test of innovation is, you must all have heard of the words blue ocean strategy. I think that is a very layman's words, but it is a very, very rigorous process. Uh, you know, people go mad. My class, I just finished my course on this in one of my marketing classes and the, st and, and the, st and the students were telling me how, how they, they have really become nervous wrecks going through the, through the rigor of that process. And I was, I was even asking myself and maybe Kamran that do you think that in Pakistan, we should bring a similar legislation or not? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, because I sincerely believe that one of the reasons for Malaysia having leapfrogged from where they were 70 years ago when they were when they were known as that Malay Peninsula joined with Singapore, the way they have leapfrogged culturally and industrially, have they done it through the spark of the genius or have they done it to, through a thoughtful process? I do not know the answer to that question. I leave it to you to find it for me sometimes. So thank you, Kamran, for allowing me to say this. And uh, back to Farhan. Thank you very much, Javed Sab. Thank you for that. I think very interesting discourse and, and good. Uh, it's something that, you know, we, uh, when we have a conversation with, uh, with our alumni, we also want you to comment on that as well when we move on. Uh, we've also got uh, Nabhan, who's joining us uh, here. He's, he's one of our most important strategic backbones because Nabhan manages all the technology for all these calls that we're doing and everything, and, uh, you know, with the alumni. So, Navar, if you can do a quick introduction of yourself as well, and then we'll move forward. Sorry, to everyone. I'm uh, Navar Kareem. I head media uh, production at IOBM. So, I look after uh, the production side of the uh, media studies department. Um, this is uh, going to be a 10th year of our media studies department. So, it's been a very, very interesting decade. Uh, and, you know, we've for those of you who might not have seen it, we have a very, very nice uh, media studio, state of the art, I think. Um, 
at, in terms of studios in uh, university studios in Pakistan, uh, it is uh, perhaps the most um, advanced and 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 one of the biggest. Um, other than that, I help with uh, I help Kamran with um, you know uh, with alumni uh, engagement activities and um, and entrepreneurship activities and other activities with uh, EMEC. Um, so I look forward to uh, more uh, of these activities with everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saban, for that introduction. Uh, now we'll move to our alumni who we have on the call today. Uh, if you could, I'll I'll. I'll take your name. I'll, I'll say who we want to introduce first. Uh, tell us a little about yourself, your year of graduation, what you're doing now, and uh, how long you know you've been working and where you've worked. So, if I can start with uh, Fahad being the first one on my list. Assalamualaikum. Fahad, uh, just Please. a second. On has to leave. Uh, I think if we can take him okay. on board first, uh, he has All right. requested. Sorry, all right. Uh, sorry, Fahad, then we'll come back to you on if we can start with you. No worries. Sorry, guys, I, I had a hard stop. I'm really, really sorry, but... Uh, and we can't hear you. So on. My name is On Zedi. I can see some familiar faces as well. Great to see everyone here uh, on, on one platform. Um, I'm, I'm actually now, right now, based in Hong Kong uh, since last two years. I work for, uh, with Philips, Philips yeah. Electronics. I've been uh, with them for six years. I'm uh, I'm a director for consumer marketing for Asia, uh, for their kitchen appliances business. Uh, prior to Hong Kong, I was based out of Dubai for nine years, uh, where I was again with uh, Philips, and then before that with Johnson and Johnson as well, in regional capacity. Uh, to be honest, uh, yeah. So very quickly, uh, sharing my my feelings on on what's happening today. I I, I just said it on on the chat as well. Huh? So alumni, I feel it's it's really the heartbeat of any any institution and it was high time that you know we we start really bringing them together on one platform and i'm super happy to see that happening right now so uh, kudos to to the whole team to talib saab and to to kamran to all the people farhan uh, who just uh, presented and spoke about it i think this is the right time to bring everyone together it's going to really really help all the graduates uh, moving forward and please uh, let us know in any capacity uh, we, we could help. I know a couple of people here in China and Hong Kong. Um, I'm not sure if they, they've joined in today or not. I couldn't see them here uh, on the screen, but I'll try to spread the word and I, I, I hope that we continue these kinds of sessions uh, so we could really, really add more value value to it. And, and thank you so much for having all of us. And and uh, Asalaamu Alaikum to Talib Saab. Uh, uh, some really uh, fond memories uh, popped up when I when I heard you talking, and and same to, uh, goes to Javed Saab as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, On. On, aren't you guys signify now? You said Philip. I said, aren't you signify now? Sorry, I I cannot hear you uh, because the white voice is really cutting. Oh, okay, all right. So thank you very much, uh, On, for your for your comments, and you know, please connect us to the. China-based alumni who you're talking about. Okay, do that and that, that we look forward to connecting with you again then over the WhatsApp group. Sure, sure. In case please, you please. have to leave. All right. Happy Thank you very much. You. Thank you, On. Can we move on to Fahad, please, now? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Tare sahab. Good to see you after a long time. Good to see you, Farhan Bhai, as well. So, my name is Fahad Bashir. I am 2000 graduate. Uh, my batch number was BBA 8 and uh, then I joined, I started my career in 2000 with Asiatic Public Relations. In 2002, I joined Mindshare. So by 2015, I was Managing Director for Group M. In 2015, I was promoted and re relocated to Indonesia. So I moved to Indonesia as a Chief Investment Officer and I served in Jakarta for like two years. I moved to Australia within Group M again in 2018, where I am right now serving as head of partnerships and pricing. So my all in all, close to 20 years of experience in media. Uh, during those three years, I took a break and I was also in broadcast sales site. So I have also worked with Geo and Airwire for three years uh, as national, first as national sales manager with Airwire and then as director of sales for Geo. After which, obviously, I moved back to Mindshare and then 
and I was primarily leading the Unilever business when I was working with Mindshare. In 2012, I was promoted to as managing director to Group M function. So all in all, I have been working with media across regions because while I was working in Indonesia, my main cluster was Southeast Asia, where I worked very closely with markets like Thailand, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam, Singapore, Hong Kong, and my regional hub was Hong Kong. And, and it's, it's great. I mean, today I'm feeling, it's, it's an amazing feeling to be connected to all the alumni here. And I was amazed to see that we have like 24 students and 24 alumni members here in Australia. I was pleasantly surprised because generally in Australia, when you start looking for people, you hardly find any people around. It's just a population of 25 million people, right? With close to like, like what, 200,000 Pakistanis. So it's really good to see you all. Uh, Tazeen Arsalan, which Talitha mentioned, who is now heading the finance, she was my batchmate. And so there are a lot of good friends out there who are working. It's been an amazing feeling after so many years. And when I look back at, and obviously Vanan Bhai is there, but a lot of other people, probably you who you don't know and who are not on the call. So like, if you don't know that uh, the media manager for Unilever for Asia Pacific is also our CBM alumni, which is Javed Jafri. He's heading five markets yeah. out of Malaysia. So he's one, uh, then, Probably again, people don't know Kester Bachani. He is a global head of digital for one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies. So I've been in contact with them because interestingly, Javed Jafri was my client being Unilever. Kester Bachani was my client being GSK and uh, Group M has the GSK client. So it was always good to see a lot of our people in the network. And, and I remember the days when actually we started looking for jobs. It was really hard. Uh, being from CBM and, you know, even in interviews, people used to ask, okay, CBM, you are just a fresher and all this, all those challenges. But it's amazing to see how we rose to the occasion. And obviously we always kept our head high in any case. And uh, when, while my, I was working with the network in Pakistan group, M, I think on my finger counts, I had hired like around 35 CBM graduates who all are like either in senior management. In fact, half of group M senior management right now are the people who I hired back in the days. So I'm really proud of the fact. And yeah, I'm here in Sydney, people who are uh, in digital media, who are interested in doing some kind of, uh, who are seeking opportunities in media. I can help. Uh, people who are in Australia already know that things are pretty tight from a job perspective here right now. Uh, a lot of people have lost their jobs and the economy is struggling. So this could be a challenging year, but uh, let's hang in there because I think that's kind of uncertainty that's across the world and nobody knows the end game of whatever is happening. <clears throat> it's good to stay connected and whichever way I can help. And that's one question that Faran Bhai I also have you know, that obviously CVM has got a very advanced now well-developed kind of a media science program. And considering the fact that I have been working with media across channels, digital publishers and all that. In Asia Pacific, in Australia, in Pakistan, I have worked with some of the finest production houses like Fremantle and Shine and all those people while I've been in the region. So how can I add value to that media science program? That's always a question that kept on popping in my mind and I used to kept on asking Maliha and Tazim that I've been away from Pakistan now. It's been like almost five years now. Uh, but there's a lot that we can do but exactly don't know how to do it. So, and obviously I myself have been working in like, it's almost six markets that I've worked in, being part of the cluster and now working in Australia. So, and, and there's a lot of room for improvement in Pakistan, to be honest, the way the channels are working, the way the industry is working in Pakistan, there is a lot of room of improvement and we can bring in a lot of change. How can we do that? That's something that obviously I can only figure out with your guidance on the next trip whenever I'm in Pakistan and once the international travel is allowed. So uh, always would be a pleasure to work with CBM alumni and all the seniors. So do let us know. Always there. And thank you for the opportunity. This is an amazing thing. Thank you, Bart. Thank you very much. I think it's been a while since we last met, you know. It's been yeah. quite a long time <laughs> since we last Ages. met actually face to face. Yes. No, I think uh, we're going to definitely take you up on that opportunity uh, that you've just talked about. And I think 
uh, Nabhan and Samran and I will connect with you separately on on team. We can do. So thank you very much for that. And yes, I, I thank you for reminding us. Actually, we're missing uh, Javed Jaffrey and Kaisar Bachani on the group. We need to add them back. So uh, right after this call, I'll probably add JJ. And if you've got Kaisar's number, share that with me and we'll add him also into the group. Will do. Right? Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. So thank you, Fahad. So the next uh, person who I'd like to give his introduction is Adnan Bakar. Ji Adnan. Uh, hello everyone. I am Adnan Wakar. I am based in Perth. Uh, basically, at the moment, I am working. I am doing my PhD over here. Uh, I well, I graduated from CBM in 2012. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Adnan. Thank you for that introduction. We look forward to hearing from you on things. Uh, can we now have? Uh, Ghulam Mustafa, please give his introduction. Ghulam Mustafa, please. Yeah. yeah. Shalom alaikum, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my name is Mustafa and uh, I did my MBA in finance in 2011. I graduated in 2012, actually. So uh, I decided to do my bio majors in supply chain logistics, and then my first, I pursued my career in supply chain. Uh, so I worked around three years in uh, in Karachi. I worked with Prima Group and Pakistan Tobacco Company, and then moved to Australia. Uh, I worked across supply chain roles in different companies there, contractual roles. So currently, I'm working in pharmacy for less. It's pharma pharma retail company as a category planner doing the inventory and demand planning. And thank you so much for bringing uh, all alumni together. It's a great pleasure to be a part of this group. Uh, I think it's a great initiative and uh, we should all be connected. It's, it's definitely a brilliant idea. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, uh, Mustafa. Uh, thank you. So we now have Mr. Javad Ali, who's in for uh, Hello everyone, my name is Javad. Um, I am a graduate of 2013. I uh, did my BBA from CBM uh, in marketing and then I pursued my career with uh, Rocket Internet, which is now known as the Rasbot Beacon. And then working for two years with them, I worked for Jay's Internet. Uh, that was for another year. And then from there on, I came to Australia and did my MBA with Macquarie University. And after completing that two years of MBA, I am now working with a company called Fair Harbor, which is um, a company owned by Booking.com. And I work as an account executive with them over here. And yeah, really nice to see some familiar faces. Uh, Shweb, Saad, uh, really nice to see you guys over here. And then Gomez Salman. And really, really nice that you guys have arranged the whole um, alumni network together. Um, I was graduated yeah. in 2015. My name is Sirat, and I did my uh, accounting and finance. I also was a, uh, I also graduated from Macquarie University, so we met there, and we found out that we were also in, in CBM together, and that's how. We got married now, and now I'm working as an associate external audit at PwC. Very nice. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you, and you know it's always good to see. I was just wondering. I was like, yeah, you know, we've we've seen like three uh, couples on this call. So uh, on, I think did not introduce his wife and moved on. So uh, thank you very much for that introduction. Right. Okay. Can we want, move on to uh, Roha Rafiq, please? Hi, everybody. This right. is, uh, okay. So, hi, this is Roha. I basically graduated in 2016, and uh, right after my graduation, I joined Toyota Pakistan. Uh, last year, I was actually leading the after sales marketing function of Toyota Pakistan, and uh, from Jen onward, my company has sent me to Toyota Motor Asia Pacific uh, for a special assignment. So I'm currently in Singapore, and uh, I am looking after two markets here, uh, which is Indonesia and Pakistan. So 
I feel like I owe a lot to IOBM because um, I think I'm a street smart marketer and it's because of IOBM uh, and the faculty members who actually kept me on my toes throughout that time. And uh, special thanks to uh, Talib Kareem and Sabina Mohsin who supported us throughout everything. So thank you so much. And it's really great to connect with everybody. Just let me know if I can support or pay back IOBM in any capacity. Thank you thank very you. much, Roha. Thank you. So, uh, how long are you will you will be on the assignment? I'll be here for the next two years. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. considerably time. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So, can can we now have uh, Royden de Mello? Royden. Yes. Over to you. Yep. Hello, hello, everyone. It's really nice to see everyone. Javed Saab, Talib Saab, really good to catch up. Uh, I graduated uh, in uh, 2013 in my master's, right after I started working with uh, Damco Logistics and then moved on to FedEx where I uh, managed the retail business marketing. Uh, moved to Australia, Sydney in 2018 and started working for Musk, Musk the shipping line, currently handling Unilever's ice cream and foods business uh, to New Zealand. So that's my channel right now. Uh, Yep, and that's about it. My wife was here a while back. She graduated as well in finance. She had to step out. It's good to see some familiar faces. Mustafa Saad. Yep, that's good to it. see you, Roger. Right Thank you very much for that. Yeah. yeah. So with that, Saad, you're next. Thank you, Saran. Um, you, Saad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Um, so my name is Saad Sheikh. Um, so I completed my bachelor's uh, at CBM back in 2012. Uh, that's when I graduated. Um, while I was in Pakistan, I uh, sort of had a you know, short stint at Engro and at RB as well, where I was sort of you know, working in you know, various roles in marketing. But in, uh, in 2013, I moved to Melbourne uh, to pursue my master's in information systems. Um, and that was a decision that I made at that point that I wanted to do something in technology and sort of stay connected with that space. So I've been mainly working in the higher education space for the last six years. Um, and I've moved across various um, sort of aspects of higher education in terms of, you know, teaching, e-learning, and most recently, um, you know, sort of working as, as a manager for digital strategy and operations, folks focusing on, you know, very current, um, you know, focus uh, areas around, you know, employability and graduate employment and student success. Um, and, um, you know, I've sort of, I'm working in the, um, in, in uh, at Deakin University, who, which is basically, you know, a university of around 60,000 students, with, you know, probably around 25,000 students, you know, studying in the cloud. So, you know, this, you know, what we're doing right now, um, and you know all the conversations around you know learning management systems, you know connecting students and graduates, and you know opportunities around getting students to build portfolio careers is so so relevant. And I'm so glad that you know IOBM is taking this head on and you know working towards it. And obviously seeing all the lovely faces over here and some of those you know Java and like others that I've just seen, you know it's great to see you guys again. It's been a very very long time, and I'm looking forward. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I think I, I, I yeah. got muted, I think, for some reason, but that's okay. So, yeah, I was just saying that uh, thank you to, uh, to everyone. So, I'm looking forward to uh, what where we go from here and happy to sort of help in any way possible. Um, and Jawad and Royden, I'll connect with you separately as well. And the others who are based over here, it's good to see you guys. I think there's nobody in Melbourne, everybody's in Sydney for some reason. But you know, whenever you guys are down here, happy to have you at my place or whenever I'm up in Sydney. So um, to see you guys. Definitely. Thanks, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Re you are requested to mute your microphone. There is a sound coming out of your phone, please. Gulam Mustafa, please. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for that, Saad. I think uh, I think you know we probably need to exchange. Uh, you know information on and you on your learning with uh, with Kamran and everybody I think we can do we can, we can really do well with that international uh, uh, you know best practices that you know of so thank you for sharing your thoughts uh, can we move on to Salman Anis please Assalamu alaikum everyone um, yep, um, Salman Anis uh, so basically graduated 
from CBM back in 2015 with my bachelor's. And then uh, one year later, I came to Australia to the Gold Coast. I'm not sure if uh, most of you know about the city because it's a very small city, but it's just a one hour drive away from Brisbane. Um, so uh, basically, I did my master's in marketing over here. Uh, that took me two years and now I'm working with an education and migration agency um, where I'm dealing with uh, clients from Papua New Guinea and Fiji. So it's, yeah, talk, uh, it's, um, I've just started with my career because of marketing. And yeah, it looks like we have really old alumni over here, which is nice to see. And also really nice to see uh, Mr. Talib Karim and Sir Javed. Actually, as the call started, I was talking to Kom. I remember in Sir Javed's class, uh, it, it was such useful content that he taught us. And I, I actually just mentioned to her the Blue Oceans and he also mentioned it just now. So yeah, it, it's, it's really um, refreshing to see everyone. And uh, yeah, I hope to stay in touch. Hi everyone, uh, this is Komal. Uh, Gigi Komal, I you. Okay. I think they've got a connection issue. With sorry, yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, Hi everyone. Um, um, so this is Komal. Um, I have done my bachelor's and uh, master's both from CBM. So I'm a 2015 graduate BBA and then um, I started my career with Mitsubishi in human resources and then moved to HBL. And uh, while obviously I had my bachelor's degree in marketing and I think once I pursued my career in human resources, I thought maybe it would be good to know, um, it would be good to do my MBA in HR. And that's where I completed it from CBM. And then um, when I uh, when I was completing my MBA, then I moved to GSK in the capacity of HR advisor. Then we got married and moved to Australia. Um, I moved to Australia just two years back, and now I'm working with uh, one of the mining companies that Rio into as uh, a recruitment officer. So um, I would say it's a great initiative to see a lot of um, CBM alumni. We did not really know we have so many CBMers in Australia. So good to see you all and. Um, I would say um, I really owe CBM. Uh, I mean, seriously, whatever we are today, I think CBM has a huge part to play in that. So in, if in any capacity from HR perspective uh, or maybe from career counseling to our uh, future students, if I could be of any help, I would be more than happy to connect with any one of them. And uh, even uh, people who are in Australia, feel free to connect to me on LinkedIn. And if I can help you out in any capacity, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Komal, and thank you, uh, Salman. Uh, moving on, in the interest of time, we, can I request Shweb to give his introduction? Hey, hello, everyone. Thank you, Farhan. Um, I think, first of all, it's a great initiative. Um, this is the first time, in fact, uh, I've been a part of any alumni-related uh, event. So I think it's, it's a very fantastic initiative. Um, I graduated from CBM back in 2013, um, and currently I'm working at Facebook. I'm based in Singapore, and um, I look after the emerging markets business for Facebook. Um, yeah, so, and before joining Facebook, um, in fact, I think I'm the only one from um, uh, IOBM who's working at Facebook. Uh, I think we have quite a few Pakistanis, in fact, who are working at Facebook. So I'm amongst one of the few Pakistanis who are working at Facebook. So before joining Facebook, I was working for Record Benkaiser, which is a CPG company. I was heading uh, e-commerce and performance marketing for Record. Um, and before that, I, I, had worked, I had worked for Beyond Digital as a, as a part of the digital partnerships team. And before that, I had my own tech startup by the name of Supreme. Um, I launched it with one of uh, another, um, let's say, uh, uh, IOBM alumni. Uh, it used to be an uh, online handyman platform. Um, I would like to mention IOBM's role um, while uh, during this entire entrepreneurial journey, apart from just acknowledging um, you know, us for, for this, this startup initiative, um, there, there's an interesting story here. So when, when we were launching Sakoon, we didn't reach out to IOBM. And because we didn't have any marketing budget, so we requested IOBM spec, uh, you know, management to shoot out a broadcast email so that we can get some orders. And as soon as they released that email, uh, we got a call from uh, from Talib Karim, sir. 
and uh, I think he was uh, amongst one of the first few customers. And um, I still rem remember I was very nervous when I received that call. Before that, I think I never received any call from IOBM or I had never been to Talib Rehmsak's office for any good reason. Uh, so that was the first time, in fact, that was a good thing for me. Uh, and apart from that, I think uh, it's a fantastic initiative. If there's any way we can help uh, uh, alumni or its current students with their um, studies or placement or anything else, feel free to reach out. And once again, thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Shweb. Thank you very much. I think uh, Farzal Dochki is also part of the Sukoon uh, team with you, is he? Yeah, um, yeah, he's yeah. he's a part of the product group uh, that we raised funding from. Oh, all right, Farzal is a good friend. Chale. good. Thank you very much uh, for that, and good luck with with things at Facebook. Uh, can we have Sandeep, please? Now? Hey, everyone. Um, Sandeep here. So just to give you my background, I did graduate my bachelor's in 2008, master's in 2009, finance. Soon after that, joined Mega and Forbes, where I was placed as an internship with, from AIG. Did two years there and then joined AIG, American International Group, in 2011, Pakistan. So I kept moving with them to Hong Kong in 2015, did two roles for them in Hong Kong. And in 2019, they moved me to Sydney. So pretty much nine years with AIG, four, three countries, four different roles. Uh, it's a good journey so far with the company. Did my CIMA UK and did my CP Australia in between these nine years after my graduation. So yeah, it's a wonderful uh, thing that has happened post to the graduation, uh, graduating from CBM. Uh, one more thing, one, one thing that I want to emphasize then, yeah, this, for, this forum is, this, this forum is uh, wonderful, okay. So, and uh, I would love to see if there is anything that uh, we can volunteer with this mentoring program or anything else as in graduates or the alumni of uh, CBM or IOBM. We would love to volunteer for that. Um, that's the one thing that I want. And another thing uh, during this period of COVID-19, guys, I want to wish you good health. Uh, stay home, stay safe. I know the number of the cases we are studying, uh, though Australia is being uh, progressing in a very good side, but uh, pretty much the numbers are going uh, not so much in a favorable side in Pakistan. So I hope things will turn well. Of course, uh, this is just a pandemic. We have come back from the major ones. So of course, this is going to go well. So stay safe. Have your families staying safe as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandeep. Thank you for the wishes, and uh, I hope everybody stays safe and everybody stays at just, home. Just uh, Farhan, as as we move yes. on, just uh, so we uh, uh, before lockdown, we signed an MOU with the uh, Charter Institute of Marketing. By the way, uh, IOBM is the exclusive partner in Pakistan for their qualifications, memberships, and trainings. And and only last night, Javed Saab uh, has been approved by them as a as a trainer for. Uh, wow. First trainer in Pakistan. So let's congratulate. Yeah, Javed. Congratulations, Javed Saab. That's, that's really good news. So over to Farhan. Yeah. GG. Okay, so uh, moving on, we've got now Sayyid Basif Ali. Hi, everyone. How are you? Uh, my name is Wasif. I graduated in 2008. And since then, I've, like, I've been into banking all my life. I've been in Dubai, I've worked in Abu Dhabi, moved to Pakistan, worked there for two years for HPL and Faisal Bank. And since 2008, 18 November, I moved to Australia, Sydney, and currently I'm working for National Australia Bank, uh, Interpret Finance, the International Trade Section. So, of course, like it gives me a flashback that when I started, I still remember the first day I stepped into CDM. And thankfully, like I still know the batchmates I had in the first session. So, and they are, one of them is still in, with me in Sydney. So, it, it just gives us me goosebumps thinking about all that again. And uh, I have been part of a, a chapter we had. Alex, I must know about that. Like, we had one session in Dubai in 2015. Mm -hmm. I was part of it. And it was great seeing everyone there as well. So, it's good to see everyone now. I, I never imagined like there are so many people here in Sydney, but it's good to see everyone here. Thanks, thanks. It's, it's really like, you can you can see like, my voice is going down like, it's really good. 
Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Really touched by your thoughts. Uh, then we have the last uh, alumni on the list, which is uh, Tan Ajazi. If I got that wrong, uh, if I got that right. Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, this is Tan Sir. Yeah, uh, after that, I say Tan. I say so. Uh, okay. I've been in portfolio management and investment management after graduating from CBM from 2008-7. Uh, after my graduation, I did my CFA charter holder. Then uh, I've been in Australia since 2014. And I currently work with uh, one of the largest wealth management companies here, uh, which is part of uh, the ANZ group. Uh, we manage around $80 billion and I directly contribute to that investment decision making. Uh, so I've been here six years. In Pakistan, I've been six years in finance. Uh, so yeah, that's my brief introduction. Thank you very much, Dan. That, that was that was really nice. So, 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 like we said when we started off the conversation, uh, uh, you know, uh, about uh, shortly, the whole purpose behind the alumni association, the behind reconnecting everybody, is that we a know who's where, who's doing what, and how can you know, the, the university adds to anything that you would like to do in your professional careers. And how could you give back to your university as well in terms of, in terms of facilitating these children and these students who are here now and giving them, you know, uh, experience from your international exposures and kind of uh, taking that forward. So uh, my only request is that if there's something, uh, so this, this, this A is the first of many engagements that we will be doing with you. And uh, we look forward to, you know, connecting, reconnecting uh, with you for a longer period of time, knowing what's happening in your lives. And we will continue to share what's happening in our lives as well here at, in Pakistan. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, you know, we would now uh, request that if you have uh, a specific interest to be formally part of the chapter, please send in your requests to Kamran Belgarami with, uh, you know, uh, with with your uh, with your with your profile, and we will definitely consider that because now what we're going to do the, the next step for us is that we will formulate formal chapters in different uh, uh, regions of the world, and we will then do activities which are more uh, which which would have you in your region more included in what is going on, and and you know we'd love to learn from you, and we'll give back to you as to what's happening as well. So if you have if you can spare the time and have the interest, please do let us know and we will then make, place you as part of the, the thing. Uh, I think, uh, like we said, that COVID is, uh, you know, for some it's, 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 uh, it's bad times and it's, it's bad times, but I think for a lot of others, it's, it's a huge opportunity and a potential as well. So I think we should be more optimistic. Let's, let's kind of bond the fraternity, the alumni fraternity together. Let's help people who are stressed or who are in trouble because of the, because of the, the changing situations uh, in the COVID environment. And, you know, if you know, if you hear of anybody who's, who has some issue or something and needs, needs to be resettled, relocated somewhere, needs a job, please give us a shout out. Let Kamran, let uh, Sumaya, let me, let us know and we can see whatever we can do in, in either your regions or some other regions that we're part of. So, so with that, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. It was wonderful connecting with you, with all of you for the first time. Like I said, this is the first of many that we will be doing. Um, and you'll be hearing more frequently from us post-Ramadan. If you, if you have interest and you have the time to take a formal position with the chapter, please let Kamran and myself know. Thank you very much, Talib Saab, for joining us. Thank you, Javed Saab. Thank you, Nabhan. Thank you, Kamran and team, for organizing this. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. I think we need to... Uh, take a break now for iftar here in Pakistan because I think it, we're about 20 minutes left in there. So thank you once again, everybody, and we look forward to connecting with all of you. Thank so, you. So Have how do we how do we let Kamran know? How do we oh, connect we, with we Kamran? Will, yeah. So on the if you're on the WhatsApp group or in this chat also, he's put in an email address where you can connect with Kamran. If you're on the WhatsApp group, we will just place the con the contact uh, information. Where you can reach out to Kamran, okay. Sumaya, and the alumni office, and you know, and then we can take the conversation forward. So I think a lot of good experience in Australia, interestingly, 
so i think we will be we will be leveraging off your your experience right and i think kamran just posted the important alumni links on in the chat as well so you can take it from there as well thank Digi, you so thank you very much guys good luck stay safe stay healthy and we'll connect soon inshallah khuda hafiz hafiz guys thank you and bye 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 thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you